Stay when you are. Three, two, one. Action. Yo, welcome Jokers, it's Original here with my wife Kim Bashi and today we're going to be talking about how to get away with nude shoots in public. And as you can see, we are doing a mystical elf shoot today. So I think the shoot has been going really good so far. What do you think, Luna? I think so too. It's been really nice. It's been fun yeah. being around with the plants. Awesome, awesome. All right, so as usual, we're doing some stuff for Patreon and for Instagram. So. Check it out. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Joka and I've been doing video production for over 10 years, shooting everything from event and party recaps to weddings, music videos, corporate ads, you name it. Now, about five years ago, I met my wife in Jamaica and fast forward, I'm living in Germany and now together we've been shooting cinematic concept videos with beautiful women making them feel sexy, empowered and confident. Now this YouTube channel is just going to talk about a little bit of the behind the scenes look, showing you some of the preparation, the shoot itself and maybe even a little bit of the edit. So the model for this shoot was actually recommended to me from a previous model. Check that video out if you haven't seen it. And funny enough, she's actually a student from Kim. That's right. Um, like most of the models we shoot, or like a lot of them, they actually like dance students, or like they're in my dance class, or they're friends, or model friends, dancer friends, you name it. So it's actually really helpful that I am in this like workspace or like in this circle, because that means we have um, huge access to like various types of women. Yeah, so Luna told me that she wanted to do a fairy shoot basically and I thought that would be cool but we live in Germany, it's winter time so I was thinking where are we gonna shoot? Like the examples she showed me were indoor setups and I was thinking well that's gonna take like a lot of time to get plans and organize everything and I would love to shoot actually out in the forest, like a new shoot in the forest would be so cool. But Kim had a better idea actually. Yeah, since I live in this cold country my whole life, I always have to find solutions for being naked. Uh, I have a little clothes on. Yeah. So there's one place, it's a climate house and it's a tropical climate house. So the temperature inside is always pretty warm, like over 20 degrees, I would say. So this is a perfect spot to be as naked as you can be in these cold times. Yeah, I felt like I was in Jamaica actually when we were there. Because there's also tropical plants, there's yeah. palm trees, there's banana trees. Really great location for a shoot like this. So now to successfully pull off a new shoot in public, you have to prepare and you have to plan properly. So we got four tips for you that you can do beforehand. Now, the first one is to research where it is that you're gonna shoot and to think about the best time where there is gonna be the least people at. Now, most of the time, this is gonna be early in the morning. So for instance, if you're shooting outside, like at a beach or a popular tourist destination, you wanna go there like before the sun rises, set up your gear and everything, and then you can start shooting into the sunrise and most times you're not gonna see that many people there. Now, if it's an indoor location, generally speaking, it's probably best to shoot before lunchtime or after lunchtime. That way you don't have so many people on their break. So for this location specifically, we just googled it. So we type in the name and then you see a graph where you can see the peak times, when are there like the most people and when there are like really little people. Like it's a perfectly good analytics you can just use for your shoot. Yeah, yeah. and the last thing you should consider is how close your location is to maybe a nearby school. So speaking of school kids, there was one accident we had, but we're gonna tell you later. Step two. Plan your shoot beforehand. Now this is the poses, the different angles, the different shots you wanna take. Usually we do a video and a photo shoot in combination. So what I like to do is I find inspiration online from Pinterest, from Instagram, like random Google searches. Specifically for the pictures, I put together a vision board with all the inspiration that I found, which I feel shows a good vibe of the shoot. Like not necessarily 
necessarily every picture we're gonna try and replicate. It could just be that maybe I like the feeling that one picture gives off. Maybe it could be in one specific picture I want the model to try this specific pose, but just have a general idea of the feeling of the pictures of the shoot. And then when it comes to the video, usually I would make a storyboard that will show the shots, the different angles, which lens I'm gonna use. And this is all based on the idea or the concept of the shoot, which Kim will tell you about this one because she came up with it. I like most of the shoots, I came <laughs> up uh, with the idea. Yes. I really like the creative part. So mm. for this shoot specifically, I just knew fairy, so this was it. So what <laughs> I did is I YouTubed it or Googled it and found some inspirational videos. So I know ah, that is that is how it's going to look like because I'm not at all into this fantasy fairy thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's cute and beautiful, but I don't know nothing. So I had actually no idea. After watching some videos on it, I had an idea how we can make a transition to like normal person to fairy because there has to be a story so we wanted to start with luna being normal walking in the park and then she sees a portal something really like magical and through this portal she's gonna be transferred to the climate house or so to our actual location with all the tropical plants and flowers and stuff step three having a second pair of eyes Exactly. So when you're on these kinds of shoots, it is best to have an assistant or a lookout. So plan that beforehand, make sure you have an extra person with you. Step four, have a quick, easy way to cover up or an escape plan. Yeah, so for cover up, you just have to bring a long coat, not a short jacket because she might be like fully nude. Mm -hmm. So when you have one long coat, she is covered up completely and you're good to go. And for the getaway, it's really important, crucial that you have your things packed when you're at an illegal location or you don't know what is going to happen next. When you have the things packed, you can just throw the coat over, grab the things and run. <laughs> just run. So think about packing light beforehand. You know, don't go with all your cameras and all your lenses. You know, pack as light as possible. So that feeds back into planning the shoot, knowing exactly what you want to shoot. That that way you know exactly what to bring. And the popo can't get ya. That's right. Okay, cringe. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Maybe we don't take this one. <laughs> now we also have four tips for you to bear in mind when doing the actual shoot. Tip one is to look out for cameras or blind spots. Now that's the first thing we did when we arrived was we checked around everywhere to see if there were cameras, but we quickly realized that it made no sense for them to have cameras seeing that it was a climate house and there's like a lot of humidity and water dripping everywhere, just wouldn't really be feasible. So luckily for us, there were no cameras. But however, this was an open climate house. And so there were sections of the house where people could see directly in. And then there were different sections where there were a lot of trees blocking. So I made a mental note out of which sections had the most coverage, foliage, the most foliage coverage. <laughs> and the first thing we did was we shot the scene of Luna entering the magic forest world because she already had on her makeup and the plan was to shoot her without the makeup afterwards to save time so that we shoot the first part of the scene last and this is also really important of why you should plan shots and the way we achieved this was Kim held up an RGB LED light we got this portable one that can give you any color you want so we set that to pink to kind of emulate you know, a glow, because what I want to do in the editing is I want to make a glowing effect. And to make that more real is you have to have practical lights. So because we had a real light shining on Luna's face at the time, 
that's gonna help me later on in the edit. So next we got like shots of her looking around, <laughs> she was amazed, you know, but these were all innocent shots because tip two is you want to progressively take off more clothes. So you don't wanna start off nude. So at the beginning of the shoot, she had on enough clothes where, you know, I mean, it was still like kind of weird for people to look at us, but it's not like, get out, Indeed. what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, you, you can't be here kind of thing, you know? Because we got a couple of stairs. There was another photographer there. Mm. He was watching us uh, for a little bit. But, <laughs> you know, we, we she still have on clothes. So, and another thing why it's good for you to progressively take off the clothes is that just in case somebody's walking by and they so happen to see what's happening. In this case, Luna had on pasties. So if you're midway and she's not fully nude yet, somebody sees what happens. It's, it's still fine, you know? So you have more and more chances. You can basically spread out the shoot longer and get more content. And at the same time, Kim was also getting behind the scenes shots with a second camera. Yeah, so this is really important because you can portray the scene from different angles. And it's also good so the pressure is not all on one cameraman. So, you know, you're already in a very iffy setting where you don't know if, if it's allowed, is this okay, <laughs> what I'm doing? And then you have to be quick. You have a new model in front of the camera, so it's always good to have a backup a person behind you who can maybe shoot something you didn't see as a cameraman, camerawoman. It's also important for our vlogs, uh, pictures we post on IG and stuff that you see the actual work because it's really good content to see how the cameraman is in front of the woman shooting her, communicating with her. Yeah, that's perfect. It's like super interesting. So we got this covered as well. Tip three is to have a lookout. Yeah, lookout slash assistant, all over assistant, because I not only did behind the scenes shots, I also took care that nobody from the official people who work there maybe are coming while she's like partly nude or fully nude. So I always like looked through the glass windows. I uh, went to the door and checked if right and left if anybody is there or maybe approaching, um, but only now and then. So I can be still focusing um, on the shoot. What I also did in addition to that is I looked around what else we can shoot. So basically location scouting during the shoot. Yeah, and there was a couple of times mm -hmm. where Kim was like, hey, Kamari, come from this angle. Yeah. It looks really good with this section. And I would go there, take her spot and then I was like, yeah, you're right, this is a good tip. And so that was really great. Now the final tip, number four, is to be quick. So after you're progressively taking everything off and it's time for your model to be fully nude, you have to communicate with her, like be clear with everything that you're gonna do once she's nude. And then once she gets nude, tack, 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 take your shots, take your videos, and then get oh. the f out of there. Because if you don't, it might happen, <laughs> very likely, that a school class is approaching <laughs> while your model is completely nude. So we were so lucky, it was just seconds after she took on her clothes that like this huge ass school class came into the door with innocent young students. <laughs> So we were just lucky at this time that she had on her clothes and we could just walk off and laugh about this. But this is also one reason why a person who looks out um, is really important. We finished like right in the nick of time. How do you feel, Luna? Uh, pretty good. Got my ears in my hands. <laughs> No, so, I'm, glad. I'm glad about our time. Yeah. And even then, even though she covered up, we still got stares because she had on elf ears and all yeah. this makeup. And I think she still had on the pasties at the time. And so all these little kids were like, What the fuck is this? Is this normal? Weirdos. <laughs> yeah. So once we were done with the climate house, we wanted to go outside into the forest to get some shots of her fully nude and to also get the beginning shots of her transitioning, walking into the portal. When we went outside to do the portal scene, it was a similar situation. Kim used the LED light so we could get some real life light as reference in the shots. And we just quickly got some shots of Luna walking through a portal. I'm gonna edit that in After Effects. I'll show you a little bit about that now. Whoosh, post-production 
Now for these shoots, we usually make a softcore PG version for IG and then a longer uncut, uncut sub version. Hardcore. For... <laughs> <laughs> this one wasn't so hardcore because it was a fairy one. Usually we make hardcore versions for Patreon. Link down below to subscribe. Now to get the portal effect, I use After Effects. And the first thing I did was I tracked the camera and then I traced over a line in the ground. I did turbulent displacement, some glow effects. If you want to see a full tutorial, just comment down below and I can go more in details into it. That's basically how I did this effect. And then I went to artless.io to find some royalty free music and that video was done. For the pictures now, I wanted it to have a really ethereal look and using a black mist filter did like 80% of the job for me because it makes your skin look soft and it blows out the highlights so I actually had that already on the camera while shooting and then in Lightroom I like to still blow out the highlights a little bit more because I wanted this to feel dreamy I wanted it to feel unreal so I increase the saturation boost up the highlights some more and then for the pictures that were more silhouetted or more artistic I made those faded added some more grain to give it a different vibe now comment down below if you want to see more about my picture editing process but that's basically my mindset behind going through these things all right so that's it for this video and next week we're gonna talk about the hot tub party we had with five women five naked <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Five naked babes in a hot tub, and we're gonna talk about how to make your models feel comfortable in a nude shoot. Super comfortable. In the meantime, check out our previous videos, and we'll see you next week. Big, Big up, up, my jokers. jokers. <laughs> yeah, that was very, very nice. <laughs>